Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, we also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you, if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you if you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better. How do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is Edward Amy. Edward is the Chief Executive Officer for J. Nolan Community Services. Welcome to the podcast, Edward. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, Jono. Yeah, I've, I've really been looking forward to having you on the podcast. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about what you do in your role as CEO? And for those, because uh, we have people from around the world listening in, tell us about uh, the company as well and what you do. 
Hi, sure, super. Yeah, so I again, I'm the chief executive officer for a nonprofit um, based in Southern California, but uh, provides services throughout the state of California, the United States. And uh, our main focus is uh, providing support services individually, one on one in community uh, for individuals with autism and other intellectual and developmental disabilities. Uh, we've been doing that since 1974. Um, that was the, the brainchild of, of several parents who were just unhappy with what support their, their kids were getting, their children, their adult children. Uh, and so, you know, 47 years later, uh, we've honed it to a, uh, a focus that is entirely, you know, person centered. Uh, it's about that person's journey. And, uh, you know, we're walking side by side and uh, it's really fulfilling. Um, I've been here at the helm of this organization for uh, about three and a half years. And uh, it's been nothing but rewarding, um, an amazing group of people. Uh, I feel absolutely blessed and privileged uh, to be at the helm of this organization. And, uh, and to be at the helm really means uh, my job is to make sure that every individual out there making our mission real in the lives of people has what they need, has the resources that they need to make that real. And uh, it's been awesome. Yeah, I, I like how you articulate, um, you know, what you're doing there in terms of making sure your people have the resources they need. Um, I, I like that. It's a good, that's a good uh, sort of explanation of, of one of the key aspects of, of being a CEO. Well, let's jump into your story, Edward. I'm really keen to start off, you know, all the way back with your childhood and growing up. What as you reflect on that season of your life, if we start there, well, what are some of the moments or even themes from growing up that really shaped you into the person and the leader you are today? Um, gosh, that's, you know, that's an interesting thought. And, and I had, I don't know that I really thought about it that way, but so one of the things is I grew up with a learning disability. Um, and, and as such, you know, kind of had to play, uh, either cover it up, you know, play like I got, everything was okay and work twice as hard uh, to look like everything was okay. Um, and it, as such, you, you, you develop some coping skills, and, um, but also you, you kind of feel like, okay, there's, there's something wrong with me, right? And, and that affects kind of your self-esteem. So I think I was uh, overcompensating with, from that to be you know, really outgoing and, and try to push the envelope and, 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 and always have a, a, a group of people that were, were I don't know, listening to my stories or whatever it might be, or, or playing the game I was playing, uh, you know, out on, on the field, uh, when we were kids. And so I was kind of the organizer all the time. And, uh, you know, I think that helped me. What I did realize growing up, uh, as soon as the, the opportunity to kind of be in front in a serious way, it's one thing you're out playing. It's another thing when they say, okay, it's time to do speeches. I realized I was terrified to speak in front of people. And, uh, I, I decided that, okay, well, then I'm just going to go out and botch this up, but I am going to keep doing this until it doesn't scare me anymore, um, which took a while. Uh, but that, I think, again, it's like it proved to me, like if you put your mind to it, you put your heart in it, and you're passionate about it, whatever that it is, uh, you can accomplish anything. And, and that's why I think it's, just, it's for me been so rewarding to be a part of an arena where we're going out and telling that same story daily uh, in the lives of people. It's like, don't underestimate. Don't decide for somebody. Watch and see what can happen. Um, and I think a lot of people decided for me. Uh, and I'm like, no, I need you to watch and see what's going to happen. And, you know, to be mm. honest and forthright and fair, uh, I had amazing cheerleaders as parents. So that obviously, you know, empowers you. <laughs> yeah, wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, I mean, uh, coming in externally and not really knowing you uh, outside of this podcast, Edward, I'm just, you know, I love hearing a story like that because I go, wow, that is like that challenge that you experienced and that you've been so vulnerable to share here. A hundred percent is, uh, must have given you a unique empathy to lead in the, in an organization you are now to actually understand, um, you know, in your own way, what uh, what kids are going through, and and I imagine that must give you a unique empathy for helping um, helping young people. You know, I, yeah, I think it does. The thing that it's given me um, that I believe is is the one of the gifts that I have that I love to share is that 
I see talent in other people, sometimes that what they don't even see. And so for me, there's this tremendous joy in, in helping them discover it, pull it out, and then use it. Uh, and that's always been the kind of leader I, you know, I've been. Uh, one of my early, early mentors in my very first um, you know, executive leadership position, he said to me, look, you're gonna learn only from two places. You're gonna learn from mentors and mistakes. You need to decide which one you wanna spend more time with. Uh, and I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So I made sure to surround myself with people who could teach me, who could, could enlighten me in areas I haven't been yet, uh, and then promise myself and then act on that for the rest of my career to do the same thing for others. Um, and that's, that's how I treat my team um, that, uh, that report to me is I'm constantly investing in them with, with my time, uh, my resources, the company's resources. Uh, and you know, I, I had a funny conversation with a CFO at one of the other companies I used to run. And he was, you know, CFOs are good people, but they're always looking at the numbers and they, they're very, you know, very li literal about it. And they're like, look, man, look how much money we're spending on training. And I'm like, yeah, we've got to invest in our people. He goes, but what if we do all this training and then they leave us? And I said, well, what if they do all this training and, or they don't do all this training and they stay? Uh, and he, he just kind of looked at me. <laughs> and, and, and that's the deal. You, you, you've got to invest in people. And yes, you will lose some people. Take that as the compliment that it is, that mm. you invested, that person embraced, grew, and somebody else saw it so much they wanted it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, oh, 110%. Um, let's talk about your parents because you mentioned in passing that a big factor for you is that you have, um, you know, you had these amazing cheerleaders as parents. I, I think something, when I hear a story like that, because we're talking about a leadership podcast, I'm always interested because I think leadership has a lot of parallels to parenting. Um, can, as you reflect, what what did your parents do <laughs> that, ha, like when you say they were cheerleaders, can you unpack what it was about how they invested in you that that yeah that makes you look back and go, wow, they were such cheerleaders for me. You know, it was it was this. Uh, not it's unspoken sometimes and even downright spoken where it was, you can do anything you put your mind to. Um, they never treated me like I had a disability. Um, they just said, well, you know, just do your very best, right? If, if you tell me Edward, that's your best. Okay. But then I had, you know, we had this tight relationship where I would, if I knew it wasn't my best, I'm not going to lie to him and tell him it was, I'm like, all right, I'll give it my best. And, um, you know, when, when school was struggled and when teachers weren't, you know, investing in me like a teacher should, man, they were down there. They're like, look, he will give you 100%. You need to do the same. You need to match it. And, and when I saw that, I'm like, Ooh, I got to up my game because my parents just came down here and, and got on the teacher's case. I better show that I got it. <laughs> um, you know, so, so I, I mean, there were, there was many a night of, of, of crying and, and, and struggling through my homework. But um, they, they just always had this, look, if this is what if you want it, mm. no one's going to give it to you. You've mm. got to go earn it. You've got to go show them, whoever them is, right, that you can do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and so just, you know, I'd gut it out with them. And they would, by the way, those night, late nights of crying, doing my homework, one of them was sitting right next to me, helping the whole way. Nobody went to bed and left me by myself with my homework, yeah. you know, and they had to go to work the next day. You know, and that investment wow. in, in like, look, we're going to, we're going to be there with you all the way. Um, even if they didn't understand what I was doing, like I got into soccer. I love playing soccer as a kid and neither of my parents had any experience with that. But <laughs> my dad knew when to scream from the sidelines, go Edward, <laughs> you know? So, you know, and that gives you this, this, this joy, this juice, you know, to, to give it your best. Yeah, and I could excel out there. You know, there is a different arena than in the classroom. Um, but I'll tell you, teachers have power. Mm -hmm. And I tell the story. I've done this in, in different um, public speaking engagements. Where, um, you know, when I was in fifth grade, how it works here in the United States, you go uh, K through six, and then you go on to middle school, and then you go on to high school, and then you graduate. In fifth grade is is a, a tough year. Uh, you're kind of switching from it being a little bit more kid oriented and now they're preparing you. You're going to middle school soon. And my fifth grade teacher, I just, to this day, I do not understand why that woman was in teaching. She, because of my, you know, how I was struggling, she literally said to me, 
you're a moron and you will never amount to anything. Believe me, that took the oh wind out of my sails for oh having hard, you know, I've been working. Mm. Yeah, I got horrible grades that year, if you can well imagine. Got mm. in a lot of trouble. Um, and the following year, and I attribute this to God watching over me. The following year, I got one of the most amazing teachers. She later in life went on to get her doctorate in education and, and did a lot of stuff. But she was my sixth grade teacher. She sat me and my mom down and she said, here's the deal. I will not give up on you. I will not let you off the hook. And whatever you do in class that takes away from the learning, you're going to give back to me in your lunchtime and your recess. But, but this is not your best. And that woman was on my case for the entire year. And in her class, I got my very first A. In fact, I got all A's and a B plus when I finished, which I had never seen before in my, oh my life. Goodness. And I realized I can do this. Mm -hmm. And I got excited about education. <laughs> and if I hadn't had her after I had that fifth grade teacher, I can't tell you I'd be sitting here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That is, that is just profound. Um, what an, that's why I love teachers, John. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, me too. Um, but, um, that story is just, yeah. Wow. I mean, from the lows of, you just think, how could you say that? Like you said, I think someone was just in the wrong job, right? Like that's, and that's yes. just like, what, <laughs> like what, what's a more damaging thing you can say to a young person? Oh my goodness. But then to have such an amazing teacher the next year, um, thank you so much for sharing that. I think you're a real inspiration. I, I know there'll be a lot of people listening and um, who may have written themselves off as being a CEO for any reason. And I just love your story because I, I love a story where you listen to it and you go, wow, you, you nailed it. You hit the nail on the head that if you just work, if you just work at it. And I love the mentors or mistakes. Yeah, and there's been so much. We're only 10 minutes in there. It's already been so much. Um, <laughs> but if you get the right people around you, if you persevere, um, it reminds me of one of my mm -hmm. favorite. I, I'm a big Seinfeld fan. And uh, there was a great podcast episode with Jerry Seinfeld and Tim Ferriss on the Tim Ferriss show. And Tim Ferriss always asked people if you could put a billboard up, you know, in, in front of the world, like that just had uh, one word or a couple of words on it, what, what would you put on there that was in a really prominent place? And he said, just work. And I thought, how profound that one of the greatest comedians ever um, doesn't talk about all the natural skills. And he says, you know what? No, you just got to work at it. Just do the work again and again and again. Um, and, and your story reminded me of that as well. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's it. He's got it. You know, it's because there's much more joy and ownership. If you know the work you put in and then you see the results. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. True. Well said. Well, as we fast forward from there, um, can you reflect on one of your first leadership opportunities? Maybe it was in high school. Maybe it wasn't until, you know, you're in your 20s or, um, or, or even older. But the first time as you think back where you hit a ceiling, where you were in the deep end managing a group of people or casting vision, really owning a project, what comes to mind, Edward? Um. I guess one where, you, as you've described, it would have been in, in the professional arena. I have been a, a social worker uh, working with kids in foster care and adoption, which which I'm very passionate about. And I got tapped to be a leader of a brand new program. Uh, and they said, we were, we're launching this program and uh, we'd like you to take the lead in this, you know, this part of it. There were several pieces of it and I had one section of it. And I, you know, while I had worked with groups of people and I've, you know, sort of taking a lead on a project. This was the real deal where everybody's going, okay, you know, where are we going? You're in charge. How are we going to do this, 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 and this, because there wasn't uh, an existing uh, program. So that, again, another one, like I inside was going, Oh my God, outside. I'm like, we got this right. Um, and um, it, it was, it was just, uh, I leaned into the idea of if I can share with them the picture I have in my head, of what this will look like, um, then, you know, we'll all, we'll all be able to go in that direction. And I think my, you know, using enthusiasm and, and excitement around it, because, you know, nobody's going to get excited if you're not, you know, why would they? And, um, 
so that that first one was was really cool because it there was a lot of uh you know trust put in me and mm. uh and and so I, and i just i kind of leaned into my strengths my strengths were how do i how do i make this work and use technology to support it so that it makes the the job easier for the people i'm leading and uh and i had a team spread across uh six counties in southern california and which can be you know pretty difficult in you know, getting people on the freeway to go somewhere so we leveraged technology before it was this you know this easy as it has been lately um with all the platforms and i actually then presented how i would save the money on the budget they'd originally given me by utilizing this because it wasn't originally in the budget i'm like but you know in mileage and this and that and this you won't have that that the up the, those above me when they you know the other programs and even the agency wide went wait a minute we could do this across the whole company look how much we could save <laughs> so that was kind of cool um and uh and 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 just was able to to continue to move forward with that so when i when i handed that off to the to my um my direct report because i had hired somebody you know when it got big enough i hired someone who'd be uh sort of an assistant to me, you know, and, and have part of the program. And then I handed it off to her. I handed her a, a, a ready-made, you know, like run it like this and it will be successful. And she was able to step right into that without missing a beat and continue to, to provide, uh, you know, the high quality service that people had come to expect from that program uh, when I stepped into another role. Um, and, you know, it's not like you didn't make any mistakes, but, but uh, it, it was, it was really fulfilling for my first really real like, hey, you're now a professional leader uh, for it to, you know, have been successful. Yeah, absolutely. What, what you know, that's <laughs> I, I love uh, how you're reflecting on it, that you would have this calm demeanor, but underneath you're going, oh, my goodness, um, <laughs> because that that really resonates with me. And I'm sure with a lot of people listening, what were the biggest lessons you learned early on as you started, you know, for the first time, really? Like you said, they, they had this great trust in you. What were the biggest early lessons you learned in that role? You know, I think the biggest early lesson, and I'm so grateful for it, is still absolutely true and is part of my day my day to day even now. And that is, who are you doing this for? If you're doing it for you, it's it's really it's it it might be okay. Uh, it might it might make the balance sheet work maybe, but the reality is it'll never be great. If you're doing it for others, whether it's to grow a team, whether it's to provide service, um, one of the things I say to my team whenever we get together and we got to go over the budget, we got to go over budget variance, right? That's part of the deal. Hey, how are we doing? I remind them, remember, at the end of every one of these numbers are people, people who depend on us to keep our promise. And when you do that and you remember why you're there, um, and, and that why is about others, not about self, then you, your enthusiasm, your passion, what you communicate to other people will draw them in. Um, I mean, that's the irony we're talking, you know, you're asking me questions about me, which is kind of, I'm like kind of uncomfortable like that. It's like, oh, but, but to be able to share to you that what I do on a daily basis is always about others. Um, that's where the power in leading is. People want to follow somebody that they can believe believes in them. Mm. Yeah. And I think it comes back to, you know, that teacher you had in grade six. And, and mm -hmm. I think, I think we can as leaders learn a lot from parents and, and, you know, some, uh, some leaders, uh, you know, will have the chance to be parents themselves or have been parents um, or are parents and, but also teachers. And, and one of the things you said when you described that grade six teacher who had a massive influence on your life was that it, it sound you know, I think you even used the phrase about having your back or, you know, you know, like there was, there was a sense of, it sounds like she really, you, you knew that she had your back, but she, she did both care and challenge you at the same time. Yes. Yes. And, and you, you can challenge people and many will rise to it. But if you communicate that care along with that challenge, then they'll want to rise to it. Yeah, that's big so difference. good. Yeah. yeah, it is a big difference. You know, here's, a, here's a really cool example that just came to mind, Jono. Yeah, um, yeah, please. Early on when I, when I stepped into the role here, um, one of our employees was the victim of uh, a scammer 
who had had um, you know fished and got uh, spoofed uh, one of our email addresses of her boss and made her think that her boss was asking her to go get some gift cards that we were going to do something for a um, you know a, a staff kind of a thing. And so she went and spent uh, a great deal of money on that. When it became when she talked talk to her boss who had returned from a, a retreat uh, about it, she's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And she realized what had happened. Obviously, I had IT do the forensics and figure out what happened, lock it back down. But, you know, they've already, you know, got the gift cards and done everything they were going to do. And she's out the money. Some of it was company money. Some of it was her own because uh, they, she had gone through petty cash. And then, you know, she trusted her boss, who she thought she was talking to. Having said all that, right, she's devastated. She feels stupid, right? Whenever we get taken advantage of like that, we all feel that way. Um, she's terrified that the new CEO is basically going to see her that way and fire her. Um, and I even had a board of directors member pressuring me to do that. And I, I picked up the phone and I called the board member and I said, do you trust me? He said, of course we do. We hired you. I said, then let me handle this. He goes, okay. All right. You're right. I'll back off. Um, and he, he was, uh, the treasurer of the board. So obviously it was a monetary thing that bothered him. But he's like, okay, I'll trust you. And I brought the employee in and I said, you now know what this looks and feels like from the inside. So what I want to do is I can't, can't just write you a check and reimburse you for your mistake. Here's what I can do. I will pay you a stipend to build out a presentation, give it, and we'll record it as, as one of our cybersecurity trainings on how to avoid this. And she's like, Okay, I can do that. And she built out this training, first person sharing, right? She's got credibility. Yeah. Um, and I was able to then, you know, you know she's, she can't afford to have what happened to her. I was able to pay for that because I would pay a cybersecurity company anywhere. But she's going to give something that's going to resonate with her, her peers because they know her and she knows how to use the language that they would experience. And we ended up with a, a high quality training that we still use today. Yeah, that's that's such a good um, approach. It really reminds me of that story from uh, might have been IBM uh, or or Dell. Anyway, it's you know that really famous story of one of their one of their executives lost ten million dollars in this you know massive um, initiative that went south and was walking into the CEO's office expecting to be fired, and instead um, you know he he said to him you know, why would I fire you? I just invested $10 million in training. And, um, and I think, <laughs> I think that that mindset is easy to talk about, but it's really hard to live out. So I love your real mm -hmm. world story of, of how you were able to do that. You got to take those opportunities when they present themselves, right? Because they will present themselves. And those are, sometimes they're defining moments, but sometimes they're, they're just, they're good milestones to check yourself. Mm. Hey, am I still maintaining that I'm a, my role is about others, right? Mm. Cause I always tell them, look, all the, all the accolades for what happens in this organization rolls downhill and all the blame and the crap <laughs> rolls uphill. That's my problem. You yeah. guys keep doing it. You yeah. guys make some mistakes, but make calculated risks mistakes. Don't be flagrant, but cause sometimes there'll be some gems in there and then we're going to celebrate them. And, and, and again, it always, you know, when I go to my board meetings, you know, and, and sit in front of them and they're great people, but they hold me accountable. I praise the team, not me, not me, because I'm only mm. as good as my team. Yeah, that's so good. Well, um, one more question before we jump into Leadership Express. As you reflect on your career so far, I'm interested in any other aha moments you've had as a leader, you know, those, those big uh moments as another guest shared you know he talked about this idea of a shift you know you have this you have this shift where you you, you realize something or the penny drops about leadership because of a, a particular circumstance can you think of any big aha moments for you as a leader yeah i i i was part of a, a i kind of was spearheading a big merger uh, well, big merger. I mean, it, it felt big at the time for the, the organizations that we were involved in. And there were obviously leaders in all those other organizations. There were seven of them we were bringing together to create one. Um, and, and it was over a, a group of private schools. And we we're trying to create something that would be 
sustainable and attractive to, um, to families looking for an alternative. And in doing that, I think the aha moment for me, and, and, and that was, I was young in, in my leadership career then, is just because somebody holds the role doesn't necessarily mean they're a very good leader. And I, I just, you know, I just never thought of it that way until I was dealing with all of these different people and was some very pleased and others really disappointed. I'm like, why don't you already know this? Or why aren't you doing that? Or how could you possibly say this? You know, it was just several things where I'm like, okay. And that was sort of, I know it's, many people probably got that a long time ago, but for me, it was like, the title does not mean you know what you're doing. <laughs> and I just never wanted to be that person. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that, that really resonates because I think, and sometimes it's important for leaders, you know, where, you know, you're in a really senior role to stop and remember that as well, that people might be in certain roles in your team, but need um, different investments because some of them will be really strong in different aspects. And some of them, sometimes you realize, why are we having so much challenge with this person and there's it's even maybe a, a real lack of emotional intelligence or just just a real lack of self-awareness and then the question is how do we invest in that and so I think you need to start which is what I love about what you just said start by overcoming the assumption get rid of the assumption that people always know what they're doing in those more senior sort of roles um, because yeah you're right they, they don't and you've got to foster an environment where people feel safe to ask for help um, and I've told them, I've said, look, if you need help and don't ask for it and blow it, I, then I'll be mad. If you need the help and you ask for the help, we give you the help and it still doesn't go right. Well, then we're going to share in what went wrong and let's fix it. But if you don't ask for the help, that's when I'm going to be upset with you. It's like, hey, we've got the resources for you. Don't, mm. don't go diving into that, you know, <laughs> that trench on your own. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Well, um, Let's jump into Leadership Express as we as we wrap up. This has been so much fun. Uh, the first question, Edward, if you, uh, I'm just wondering if you can think of a book or maybe there's multiple that you've gifted to other people or, uh, you know, you've recommended a lot to other people. Yeah, you know what? There's kind of a trio. Um, uh, one of them is called the Oz Principles and we built our, our companies, this is the second time too. I'm, I'm trained in the, in, in providing the the uh, the sort of the the training and, and coaching in what's called the culture of accountability, and we build a culture of accountability within our companies, and that's not a culture of blame; it's the opposite. It's it's uh, we're all accountable, and so it's based on the Oz principles, which is a really cool book. Um, and again, these depend on where somebody is and what they need. The other one I really really like uh, recommending to people; it's a quick, easy read. I'm a big fan. Uh, is Simon Sinek's Start with the Why, um, and that is fantastic stuff. And then. For some people, there's a great opportunity for them, and it kind of launches them into some some really great questions and and in, introspection. And that is the Four Agreements um, by uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. It's not necessarily work related; it's more life related. It's a fast read, but it's it's really insightful. Mm. Gee, they're um, absolutely wonderful recommendations. Uh, thank you. Next uh, next question: one on one meetings. This comes up all the time. Leaders want to know. How do I run great one-on-ones uh, for my direct reports? What advice would you give? Kind of like we're doing, make it a conversation. Let you know, let somebody tell you. you know, they got to get some information imparted to you. But you know, just running down an agenda, which you, know, you got to have an agenda. But I mean, if you're just running down an agenda checklist, okay, we're done. You're not building relationship, and you're not building the opportunity. You know, or even if you might, might say the privilege of being able to speak into what's going on for them. If they're just reporting at you and you're like, thanks, goodbye, then then you haven't earned the privilege to say, hey, have you thought about this? Hey, let's let's talk about that for a little bit more, you know, and you get to see where they're taking pride in what they're doing. And then they feel good about sharing with you. And then you'll also get that safety where they go. I don't know what to do here. And now you're having a quality you know, one-on-one -on -one because they, they're in a trusting environment with you. Then I'm like, oh, my boss doesn't think I know what I'm doing, you know? And, and it only yeah. happens if it's, if it's a flow of conversation and you're invested in them. Yeah, that's so good. That's great advice. Um, on, a, on a lighter note, or you can pick something serious, uh, what's a movie or TV show that's a favorite of yours that's, that's really influenced you? 
Okay, this is a, it's a lighter note. Uh, it's been my favorite since I was a kid. I love the movie Arthur uh, with Dudley Moore. Still number one. It's just silly. It's ridiculous. And it's just some days I go there to just kind of tune out. <laughs> <laughs> love it no that's great and i love a good recommendation like that as well because it's um you know it's it's a good reminder that as leaders you know you do need that switch off time as well so uh love the recommendation mm -hmm. last last question as we land if you could only give one piece of leadership advice to a young leader what would you say to them don't try to be the smartest person in the room because then you set the ceiling don't do that. Hmm. That's profound. I think the whole episode's been profound, really. It's been it's been such a joy. For those who have loved um, today's episode and hearing your stories and your wisdom, Edward, how can they connect with you online? Um, they, yeah, I've got uh, a LinkedIn uh, profile, happy to connect with people. Um, they can easily reach me if they just want to shoot an email uh, here at uh, my office. Um, it's real simple. It's just Edward at J Nolan, J A Y N O L A N dot org. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank our listeners for tuning in. One of my favorites, uh, honestly, it's just been jam packed. Some of those stories are still going around in my head from what Edward shared. And, and I, this is definitely one of the most inspirational episodes and uh, yeah, just jam packed with goodness. So I've loved it. Don't forget listeners. I also have the John O'White leadership podcast and the leadership question of the day podcast. There are two other places you can go to continue to invest in your leadership. But I want to finish today by saying a massive thank you to you, Edward for being so generous with your time and being such a joy to spend time with. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Truly my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content and it gives you exclusive, limited early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders. And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I, I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this. I can't tell you how much 
that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and and please do that. And look for me, Jono White or Clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in step up or step out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself, and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. Uh, 95% of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. And I stand by that. It's uh, You have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it, and I've experienced it firsthand. It works. So you can go to Amazon, look up Step Up or Step Out John O. White or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time.